Hey everyone, welcome to uh, part um, 16.1, yes, point one. Today's going to be GIMP UI, so basically last um, last episode we did, um, obviously we did, oh, what did we do? Photoshop UI, today we're going to be doing GIMP UI, so if you don't have Photoshop, GIMP is, if you don't know what GIMP is, it's free, it's a free image manipulation program. Um, and we're gonna be. I'm gonna show you how to download that and use it to make UI. If you don't have, basically, this is free, and if you don't have Photoshop, you can use this. So, um, what we're gonna do is first, you're gonna want to go over to Google and just type up GIMP.org. The link will it'll be the top link in the description. And then you're gonna click download on whatever version's here. For me, it's currently 10.2.10.22. You're gonna click that. Uh, it loads, and then it's gonna bring you to a another site. It won't download straight enough, but it'll bring you to another straight away. Sorry, and then it'll bring you to a downloads page, where when it loads, and it shows you your the current stable version, and then you can download it. And then um, there's some manuals and stuff over here, languages, etc. Um, but all you're really gonna want to do is just download the latest and then click directly, uh, and it will create a zip folder. You're gonna unzip it. Uh, I don't actually think it creates a zip folder, but yeah, you're you're just gonna open up the .exe program and then install it to where you want. I've already installed it, so I won't be doing that. And you're gonna open it up after you've installed it. You're gonna open it up. Uh, you basically just installed it like you'd install any other program. When you open it up, you should see something like this. Mine, I think my version of GIMP is slightly older, but you should see something similar to this. Um, if not, let me know in the comments. Um, or if you don't see anything like this at all, you can click Edit Preferences. Um, well. and it'll load up some preference settings. Which my here they are. Then you just click reset and then OK and then just click reset and it will just bring you to this like this. Um, you may see something up here. This is all your history. Just ignore that. So you click file and then we're gonna click on new. And I personally think it's a lot easier to make things transparent in GIMP than Photoshop, but that's my own opinion. We're not gonna go for a template, but for our size, our width is going to be. Whatever our backdrop size is, which we've got 480 by 360. So we're gonna head back over to GIMP um, 480 in the width, and then the height is gonna be 360. And click OK, and it will fill out probably a black screen, uh, whatever you know if you call it size. But either way, that doesn't matter. I'm just gonna do some quick stuff here so I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah actually no this is fine now up here we've got all our little tools they're quite small um there's a way to change that I believe it's this you can drag this out or oh, sorry collapse it like that but I'm just gonna leave this one my background here um I'm just gonna create a little box and as we're doing this you should see the screen appear here I'm just going to set this to 50 by 50 in the size. If you don't, just click this button and click Add Tab and Tool Options. And click that and open it. Um, and this looks good. And we are going to... Now, all we're going to do is drag this one out here. Uh, so it's roughly centre. As I say, it's not. this isn't the best in the world for things like this. Let's make this 25, 25. Well, that just kind of makes that a bit bigger, doesn't it? Let's say 400, and then we'll set this. Just fiddle around with these two, you're happy with them, I suppose. Uh, 425. Yep, that, that looks about right. Actually, 430. Yeah, that looks about right. Um,. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna just select all of this here and you're gonna fill it all with grey. 
Now, you probably don't ask why. You'll see in a minute. <clears throat> now, what you're going to do is you're going to select... And you're just gonna like this. And you're just gonna say the size. You're gonna say, uh, you're gonna say twenty. Position. You're gonna say ninety. Or basically, just position it to cut these squares in half, basically. And then you're gonna say delete. Or not, because apparently delete doesn't work. You're gonna get the rubber, and. Everything in this area is going to rub out. You can edit the size of the rubber by going over to here and editing the size. But then you're going to just do the exact same thing again. So you're just going to move it. No, you're not. Because this is annoying. You're just going to... Um... Hmm. You're going to get the size to remember 20. That's all that matters is 20. Actually, no, no, you can just change the position here of it. So, 180, let's say that. You'll always have to reselect it, but like, kind of go the same size. We know the size was 20. So, then just make the size here 180, and we'll say rubber. Uh, so, if you didn't quite get that, I'll do it again. Um, select tool. Select down, straight line, make the size 20, or whatever this thing here, thing here was. And then you're going to go from 180, add on 90 to 180 for 270. And then you're going to rub that out. And as you can see, we're slowly making a block effect. Um, we go, and we'll repeat that again in a second. Let's just do that and say size 20. Then we're going to go from 270, add 90, which is 360, and rub this thing out, and that'll be that. And see, these aren't perfect. Actually, these might be a pretty good size. They look pretty good. I think this one's a bit thicker than all the others. <clears throat> now what we're going to do, we're literally going to cut across here at a thickness of 20 on the Y. And we're going to just rubber, and boom. Obviously, it's not perfect, but I will. So we'll say 20 again. And this one's going to go from 10, because that's what it originally was, was 10. Although that's not what matters. We'll say, we'll just add, let's say this was 90. No, let's say this was 80. No, let's say this was 75. Oh, I have accidentally. If you do this by accident, you just grab that and then up there. Um, I'm not, I'm not very good with GIMP, sorry. Um, I said it's from 75 and I'll say 150. Let's try a fifth one. Yep, 150 will do. And then, once again, just rubber it all out. And boom, we've got like a little grid here. It's not the best, it's not as easy as Photoshop, but we've still got it. Then down here we just leave room, and obviously you're gonna want to make sure you have room in between these for your variables. I don't think mine will. Um, so what you need to do is just make your things thicker for blacker lines, like thicker black lines. But um, and then to by the way, just click that. Um, but I'm not gonna be using this. I'm gonna be using my Photoshop ones anyway. So yeah, but um, now you've got your five by three grid. Obviously, the Photoshop is a lot better. I can fit seven into my Photoshop, as I said. But you know, <laughs> GIMP, you're not gonna get everything you get for Photoshop. And then down here, you leave. And then to it, now, you're gonna want to export it as a PNG. So rather than clicking File Save as, you're gonna click File Export, and then it's gonna load this up. You'll see .png, obviously this is all going to be black, but then you're going to go, I'm going to go to the area, you're going to want to save this, and I'm just going to call this test.png. And after I've done that, when it exports, 
it'll do some loading and export image as PNG just gonna click export if it doesn't it, oh and when you export it um, if it doesn't say dot PNG use uh, type at the end of whatever you're calling it dot PNG like that and then yeah um, anyway now we're gonna go back over to here and obviously to import it we're just going to go to our inventory wherever that is oh no the inventory is for 80 by 3 oh no i think we've done it right then you just click on this hover over this little cat icon and then you'll click import from computer i drag it in i'm not going to do it and then you uh oh look um you click this button here surprise not surprise upload costume and then you obviously have to replace your variables re you know put them back into position move these change the sizes and fiddle with the go to code and stuff i did more in depth at the end of last video on the photoshop more in depth on how i did that so if you want to do that just go watch the end like the last sort of five or so minutes of that video maybe go back further back but i don't know but yeah, anyway, that's about it for GIMP UI. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Why is there a rock here? I don't know. And bye. I'm just going to quickly save this. And yeah.